I'm Robert Meyer. Um, I know I graduated in 1992, and I think I started at Jess in 78 or 79. So I think Jess had a big impact on my, on my life, a positive impact. Um, but I guess in the most important years for me, going from grade 9 through 13, which is what, what was the Abitur grade in those days, I had an exceptional group of teachers. So we had an art teacher who told me, um, or who taught me, he was art and German, uh, Christoph Wiegand, and he taught me how to take apart a text. So literally, because he was an art teacher, and this was pre-online um, formatting, right? So we, he would take a pair of scissors and he would cut the paragraphs out and reformat the whole thing, and the text was completely different. And editing, and uh, especially for precision and content, is something that has been very important to my life, having written lots of business plans, having read lots of documents. Um, that's a skill that I really trace back to Jess. Um, another is my curiosity. Okay, so when I say I'm excited about the future, it's because I want to know what lies ahead. Yeah? And I'm a person who's naturally very curious. And we had uh, science teachers in those days. Herr Lechner, who was at the same time the principal, but he also taught geography and biology. Sensational. He had little slides um, that he had on a slide carousel projector. Um, Herr Lechner had lived in, in the Middle East, um, had traveled extensively all around the world, was an avid photographer. So he must have had, I'm guessing, 10,000 slides. And we had a history teacher, for instance, um, Wolfgang Hinas, who was unusually international. But Wolfgang Hinas had studied in America, I think, and he'd been all around the world. As well. And he had a very keen interest in geopolitics. So we went through um, post-World War II global affairs, um, not just from a textbook perspective, but from a media clip perspective. So he would teach us, you know, what the media was writing about JFK's assassination, about Watergate, whatever the thing was that we're talking about, using media clips rather than, so newspaper clippings in those days, rather than using textbooks. And that, I mean, until today, geopolitics and sort of macro awareness is a very important thing in what I do. So I think the, the curiosity as well as the ability that you can actually impact things, that it really is down to you, that I learned at chess. So that's very important. Okay, upon graduation, I went to Germany. Um, I lived in Singapore most of my life. So we moved here when I was less than a year old. So this was my first real stay in Germany beyond extended holidays. So I moved to Hamburg, where I interned as an apprentice with Dresdner Bank, which is now part of Commerzbank, uh, from 93 to 95. And then I stayed on in Germany and I did my business degree at the European Business School in Österreich Winkel from 95 to 99, and then I came back. So I'm currently a full-time investor. Um, I started my career in a family business, um, which has since been sold. Um, my initial roles were to promote German products in Asia. So I was, I guess, one of the batch of people who moved around with a, with a suitcase full of catalogs and materials and samples uh, to Indonesia, to Thailand, to Malaysia, and so on and so forth. Um, I then started um, a venture company in 2005, and that ultimately ended in a stock-listed company here in Singapore, which I ran up until last year. And I retired from that uh, middle of last year. And since then, I've become a full-time sort of investor running my family's business, I guess. So as an investor, um, what I try to do is I try to find the right people in the right opportunity at the right time. And one of those opportunities is, um, it's actually Singapore Aquaculture Technologies, which is a digital fish farm here run by a couple of Germans, incidentally, um, one of whom sat on the board of Jess, I think that's how you know, Dr. Dirk Acherberger. Yeah, so um, he's a friend and he had this really exciting idea together with his business partner, Michael Fuchtmann. And I was lucky to be at the right place and to be able to support them. Um, so I'm both an investor as well as a director in, in that company. And what we do is we farm fish and we farm um, tropical fish, four species by now, um, barramundi, snapper, grouper, and threadfin. And we farm them in tanks, on a floating platform with a fully digitized farming system, which allows us to have much higher productivity, uh, lower operating costs, and produce fish which is not treated with antibiotics. And that is 
the kind of food that you want to be eating. Um, and that's the, really the only real animal protein that you can produce at scale in Singapore. And uh, yeah, that's a really exciting project. And I should say, I met Dirk, the CEO, through my wife, when my wife was on the board of directors or board of governors of Jess. So that's a, a Jess baby, if you so will. So I had very good memories of Jess. Um, I think Jess is a wonderful school, especially in the primary school, um, simply because it is perhaps a little more of a, a village school, um, especially when the old campus was still at Jalan Juan Kichil. So we decided, my wife is Singaporean Chinese, um, but we decided that we wanted our kids to go into the European schooling system. And what better place to start than at Jess? Uh, and my wife in, in, I guess, her role as mother and as caring mother, um, felt a strong calling to support the school, uh, initially as a volunteer, um, as a parent rep. And that one thing led to another. And then she uh, spent, I think, three or four years on the board. So my advice to current Jess students would be to make the most of what Singapore offers. Yeah? I had the benefit when I was, I think, 14. I did my first two week internship, or maybe it was 15, uh, in a company, it was a shipping company. Um, ironically, it's in the same building where my office is in now, so that's kind of strange. Um, but even though I didn't do much other than manage stamps and apply them to, so I did their, their mail, um, and I had to count the stamps at the end of the night, I had to make coffee, that sort of stuff. But I don't think that that sort of exposure was commonplace in other places in those days. Yeah? Singapore is very small. Everybody knows somebody who can help you, um, whether it's cultural exposure, right? Get to speak the language, get to know what are the values and the, the social norms that form Singapore, which are highly complex. Um, if it's business exposure, if you want to, as I said, intern in the company, if you want to come work on my fish farm, you know, or not my, on our fish farm, drop us a line. Um, those sort of experiences I would encourage to take on as much as possible because once you leave Jess and perhaps leave Singapore the world is much bigger um, and perhaps not as easy to originate those sort of experiences. My favorite memory of Jess was uh, two things. Uh, one was the move from um, uh, Chatsworth Avenue to Jalan Bukitinggi. I think I was in maybe eighth or ninth grade, something like that. And what it really meant was that we knew every nook and cranny in the school. We helped to carry furniture into the teacher's room. Uh, we helped with the IT system, very basic, but still it was an IT system. And it really meant a lot to us that we had this kind of input. Yeah? So as a student to be able to say that I moved or I helped move the school into this premises is an unusual thing. And that was great. Um, the other thing I remember very fondly were our classrooms. We were in Bali, we were um, in, in Eastern Malaysia, I think it was in Kuching, um, up the river in long houses, we, we, Tiaman, we had some really good times. Um, and of course, in those days, there was no telephone, so being away meant being away. So we had seven days of really uninterrupted fun, which was, yeah, I guess an experience I still treasure until today.